What's up everybody, I have a PE problem for you today, but I am going to put myself under the gun and do it within that six minute average window. Then we're gonna talk it through afterwards. Am I gonna get it right? Am I gonna get it wrong? I don't know, let's see. And yes, I'm just going in totally blindfold. I just picked a problem and we're gonna see how it goes. So buckle in, let's get started. I know it's six minutes on average per problem, but I only have a five minute timer. I'm working on it, I'm working on it. We're gonna refine it. Ah, ah okay. Uh, the formwork and shoring in place at both levels, two-story building. Shores are spaced at six feet on center. I want that. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Uh, assume all level two loads are carried by the formwork and shoring during the roof pour. All right. Uh, all level two loads. During placement of concrete at the roof, the service load, okay, in a shore at level one is most nearly. Okay, and this looks like pounds. They would give you the units for that. I don't know why they didn't for this one. Okay, and we have information up there. Okay, so we need to know what's what's that reaction? What's that summation P? Okay, uh, service load means it's ASD or unfactored loads. Uh, so we have uh, live load and then we have, that's dead load, that's dead load, that's unit weight. Okay, so we have dead plus live load. I can draw that better. I'm under the gun, so I'm just gonna freaking fly here. All right, six inch roof, so I'm gonna go do dead load of the roof. <coughs> Excuse me. Six over 12, 150, unit weight of concrete. Um, that's dead load of the roof. That's one half, so that's 75 PSF. And then we have sh shoring, another 12 PSF. Gets you 85, 87 PSF. Sorry if I went off a little bit. Uh, okay, so that's dead load roof. Uh, dead load second is 10, okay, so it's different. 10 inches, concrete as well. Uh, 10 over 12 times 150. That's 125 PSF plus shoring as well, 12 PSF. It gets you 137 PSF on the second. Okay, and then live load is 50 PSF for both. And assume all level two loads are carried by the formwork. So level two and the roof is being poured. So it's all, so it's both, it's both combined. Okay, so uh, what's our area? That's our load, what's our area? Six feet on center. Okay, so our area is six foot by six foot. That's 36 square feet, um, two floors of that. So it's uh, summation dead load. It's gonna eat, whoa, ho -ho. dead load is gonna equal 87 plus 137 for total dead load times the area of 36. And then it's gonna be summation live load equals 50 times 36, both those out, okay, so. 87 plus 137 times 36, 8,000 pounds. 50 times 36 is 1,800 pounds. What's wrong here? Two floors of that, two floors of that. 36. I almost screwed that up trying to be fast with that and that. Um, you can keep it separate per floor if you want to not mess yourself up there. Okay, that plus, that is 11.66 kips. I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna say C, what's the time? Oh, we got a minute 20, let's go. Um, but did I do it right? Uh, so I gotta go check that now and see. So I'm gonna cut here. I'm gonna go check the answer and then we're gonna talk about it quick. Ah, let's take a breath. I feel like I was, whew, I was so jittery right there, my gosh. So I just checked the solution and we are confirmed that C is the correct answer. So, hey, clap it up for all of you out there that got C is the right answer. For all of you that did not, don't panic. Let's talk this through a little bit. A couple things to digest here, things that I've, I've underlined at the very start that I grabbed onto. Service loads, so I'll go green moving forward here. Those are unfactored loads. So I know that is a huge question from people of, hey, should I do this problem LRFD? Should I do it ASD? How do I know? 
when they talk about service loads, that's unfactored loading. The six feet on center was my shoring spacing. So if you're looking in plan, like that whole, you know, roof is shored. I don't know if you've been on a construction site with shoring, but it's like a maze of shoring poles. And they are usually all spaced at some most likely equidistant spacing on center, except if you have custom areas where there's super heavy loading, then maybe it's like there's a bunch more because this zone has to handle 500 PSF of load or something like that. But so I used that information to determine what the uh, tributary area was that a single post was supporting, because that's ultimately what the question is asking. This is the one that was kind of tricky for me, that took me a hot sec to think about. Assume all level two loads are carried by the formwork and shoring during the roof pour. But then it says, during placement of concrete at the roof, the service load in a shore at level one is most nearly, I don't know why, but in my brain, I think of the first part as talking about, okay, level two loads. So it's like, okay, I have to do, I have to figure out level two loads. But then the next sentence talks about the roof and then follows it up with saying, okay, roof loads and what is the, the load at level one. And I just, I don't know why I think about that twisting of words to be like, what's the load at level one of just the load from the roof type of thing. But in this case, they are asking you for the roof load, and then simultaneously all of the loading at level two is also being supported by the shoring post on level one. So it's everything, it's both floors. Uh, they give you your weight of your concrete, or your density of your concrete, so you need to use that. They give you a dead load of the self weight of the formwork itself, formwork and shoring, all that stuff weighs something. So you have to account for it. And then they give us a construction live load and they say, all levels active. So there's 50 on the roof, there's 50 on the second floor. I know I did this kind of backwards in explanation, but um, I needed my loading and I needed my tributary area for one of the shoring poles. I already described up here how I got my tributary area for the shoring poles, which I gave you right here. And then this area is where I defined my loading criteria. So I knew I was dead plus live, and then I split it up into dead load of the roof and then dead load of the second. And that actually was good that I caught that because um, I just, I usually split it up by floor. Um, some of the SE problems that I'm doing, they, they give different weights per different floors to make it more complex. So I split it up like that just intuitively. And the reason that helped is because it did turn out that I have two different dead loads per floor. So, um, so that was nice. I got my dead load per floor from the concrete and then just lumped on the shoring weight. Did that for both scenarios. The thickness of your floor ultimately determines what the weight of your floor is for that concrete. Then I moved down further and I was like, okay, we can plug this stuff into the load combo. Now, I almost messed up here because I just said, okay, I know the tributary area for both floors is identical. If it was not identical, I couldn't do the method that I did here. I would have to split it out into the separate loading, 87, and then do another equation for 137 if it was a different tributary area on the roof versus the second floor because it's a different contribution of load and there's different loads on each floor. But because it's the same, I can just lump these together and then multiply just one tributary area to get you the same load as doing uh, 87 PSF times 36 plus 137 times 36. That gets you the same answer as right here. And I almost messed that up with live load because I just did 50 times 36, but that's only the contribution from one of the floors. There's that live load is on both floors simultaneously. So I needed to multiply by two. Um, this, you're like, well, how'd you know to do that? What the hell? This number just with a 50 PSF just seemed low to me intuitively. I know you're like, oh great, thanks for the thanks for the hot tip there. Like, I'm glad it's intuitive for you and not me. It is just what it is. I, I've worked with enough loads and built that intuitiveness over my still early career, but career. Um, so I was like, whoa, what the hell? That's That seems too low. 
So times two, because really it would be if I wanted to match, if I go blue here, the way that I did eh, right here, this would actually be 50 plus 50 times 36. So saved myself there, thankfully. And that got me all up, all added together, divided by a thousand. I shouldn't have put it into kips. I, I preach this all the time. Leave it in the units that the problem's asking for, but 11.66 kips. Kips is a thousand pounds per kip. And that got me C. Let's just say, you know, hypothetically, I'm, I'm burning and I didn't catch myself right here that and only added the one floor of live load by accident. That would be 9.86 uh, kips. And oh yeah, see? No tricky tricky, they're being naughty. They're being naughty, what the f They're 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 trying a little bit there. They're trying to, you know, that that's right on the money. Um so take take that as you will. Um it's not that it's trying to trick you, but this is something, it's not going through codes or anything. This is just load takeoff um, and, and that's all that it is. So they want you to be precise with it. It's not about, oh, kind of close. You should be exact. Let me know what you thought about doing this method. Uh, I thought it was kind of cool and I wanted to see, you know, what it was like under the gun back when I had previously done it because all of you were going to be doing it. Um, so why, why not me? But if this was too fast and not intuitive enough and you don't understand and you like my explanations more drawn out, let me know in the comments down below. Until next time, catch everybody. Peace.